Hey guys, it's MKFin back with another video. Today we're talking options, specifically the risk measure known as delta. To help us understand this measure, I've elected to use a table that I've created in Excel rather than actually showing you the details in the Robin Hood app. Doing it this way, I can use simple animations that will help us comprehend some of the concepts at hand. The table and its data is derived from the actual Robin Hood data, which can be found by going to the ticker within the app and clicking the options detail page. Here you can see the section known as the Greeks, which displays all the information we already have compiled in our Excel table. What I've done here is take Apple options, both calls seen on the left and puts seen on the right side of this table, and plotted them. The middle represents the strike price, all of them expiring March 15, 2019. Without having to shovel through so many Robin Hood pages to get these details, I've just compiled all the Greeks for all these various options on one table. It's important to keep in mind that when I made this video, Apple was trading at $156. So let's get started. Today we're going to be focusing on the delta columns, seen here on both the put and call side. Delta on the call side is easier to explain, so we'll start with that one. Delta always ranges from 0 to 1 on this side, and it gets closer to 1 the more in the money an option is. This is why you see delta decrease as the strike price goes above the current price of Apple, which stands at $156. Let's take a look at the $170 strike price option, which has a delta of 0 0.20. What this basically boils down to is when Apple stock moves up $1, the price of the option will move up $0.20. Cents. The same is true in reverse. When the Apple stock moves down $1, the price of the option will fall $0.20. Cents. Although this is rather simple, it's important to note that delta is not constant. It always changes relative to gamma, which is in another Greek based on the rate of change. It's also subject to change with respect to implied volatility. This means that delta is always in motion, moving around based on a number of other parameters. Now let's take a look at the put side, which is a little bit more complex. Specifically, we're looking at the $170 strike price option, which has a delta of negative 0.78. When you buy a put, you want the underlying stock price to fall in price. Because of this, you have to think about delta on this side in reverse. Basically, it boils down to the same thing. If Apple stock goes up $1, the price of the $170 strike price option will fall $0.78. Cents. If the price of Apple goes down $1, the $170 strike option price will go up $0.78. Cents. Investopedia.com has one of the best explanations of delta on the internet. They compare delta as a racetrack, where the tires represent the delta and the gas pedal represents the underlying price. Low delta options are like race cars with shitty tires that won't get a lot of traction when you rapidly accelerate. On the other hand, high delta options are like drag racing tires that provide you a lot of traction when you step on the gas. Delta values closer to 1 or negative 1 provide the highest level of traction. They also move the most when the underlying asset moves but they are also the most expensive. Low delta values are associated with high risk, high reward. The underlying stock price may move $1 and you will not experience much of a profit, but if it moves so much that it gets closer to the strike value, you will explode in profits.